As always, I have placed a link in the description down below if you like to look at this soldering station further or acquire one for yourself. So whether you're new to soldering and are looking for your first soldering station or if you are an experienced solder and are looking for a replacement soldering station, this video will help you decide to see if this is the right soldering station for you. And here's the start of the show, FT80W soldering station very compact unit you can see that it's probably about the size of my hand and it has a soldering iron that has been permanently attached to it and you have a power cord over here which seems to have enough length to be able to reach somewhere to plug it in now my experience with soldering irons is primarily in a production environment and that experience happens to be for a long time with hako products now the hako station is very reliable and it lasts a long time. This thing is built like a tank. And I wanna put them side by side so you can get an idea of the size. Now, I do wanna point out that this is just the driver for the Hako unit. So when you're buying a Hako unit, you get a driver, a holder that's separate, and then the soldering iron. So it takes about the same amount of real estate as this little guy does, except that with the Hako one, you have two things that you have to juggle and place in different areas. Now this might be convenient for you, you might like to have your station here and your soldering iron holder over here. I actually prefer this design better because having the holder integrated next to the power driver makes this extremely compact and very easy to put away and I don't have to worry about setting up two or three different things whenever I'm about to solder. And when I was looking for a replacement soldering station, I considered buying another Hako unit. This particular model happens to be FX888, which is an extremely popular soldering station. This happens to be the analog version. Now they even have a digital version, FX888 the digital one but it's the same format and same package so why would i go and replace my trusted hako with an unknown brand to me called the toato well this happens to be very very affordable i can buy two of these things for the price of one. Now, both of them have a one year warranty. So I'll figure I'll try this unit out. If it fails under one year, it'll get replaced under warranty, or I can buy another one and still have paid less than having bought a single one of these Hako ones. So first we have a very simple power on power switch button right here. And then we have a dial here to dial our temperature. This is a display that will show the temperature. Now the Siren Iron holder or the Siren Iron itself, unfortunately is wired permanently to the base. Again, at the price point where if this were to fail, I'll throw this whole thing away and I get a brand new one, I understand why they did that. However, you do have in the Hako one the advantage of if the soldering iron portion fails and the driver's still good, you can just replace it because it can separate. But again, you're going to pay double the amount of cost if you decide to go for a Hako one. Now, even though this is permanently attached to it, there is enough core length for me able to reach, uh, put this a little bit far and then work in my soldering area over here. So that's pretty cool. Looking at the front of the soldering iron is that it uses a standard tips. So I can use the Hako tips that I already own. I simply remove the collar over here and then I can move this out and replace the tip. You'll also notice that it uses a ceramic heating element, which is the same as the Hako. It's a pretty reliable way to solder but we do want to be careful that we don't drop this because that ceramic can crack or we don't use pliers on here because we can break that ceramic same same as with the Hako unit now the base also has a built-in tip cleaner when we are soldering we want to clean our tip and there are two ways of doing it some people like to use sponges with water I prefer brass sponges with water sometimes can oxidize the tip this brass will clean the tip really good and I don't have to worry about topping off a sponge with in making it wet every time I'm gonna solder. I can just pull this out from storage and start cleaning my tip and that's it. You also have a built-in holder for all the soldering iron tips. This is a nice touch. Hako does not have that and here we can place our tips that we commonly use. And here's another thing that Toa Auto has integrated and that is this a solder roll holder so this is going to hold the solder and the solder goes right here and we can pull solder from there or i can screw it in here which is what i'm going to do and it's going to be all one piece making setting this up 
for those one-time solder projects and putting them away very very quick and also again i think of value we're getting a holder that's probably about another ten dollars but not only that where did i get this solder well this thing came with a solder roll now it's not a ton of solder where it will be all the way to the top but this is sufficient solder i think for probably any hobbyist where this is gonna last a long long time and for a mechanic i probably won't be needing to buy a roll of solder for a long time, I suspect this is probably gonna fail before I finish the solder. But what other accessories we get? Well, we also get a little set of tweezers. Now, tweezers are also an additional expense that you have to invest when you start soldering. Can you solder without them? Yeah, you definitely can. However, does it help to have tweezers? It helps tremendously because sometimes you wanna hold things without burning your fingers while you are operating the solder iron with the other side and especially if you're soldering surface mount devices or other things that need to be held in place with very very a lot of precision tweezers will come in handy they also threw in this little solder sucker sometimes if we are trying to remove something we have to desolder it now to desolder not only do i have to heat up the solder i have to remove the solder somehow and i can use that with a little a roll of what we call solder wick or I can use a solder sucker and then I will press on here and get the solder nice and hot, put this on here. And when I press on that, it releases the plunger and the suction pulls the solder out of the area that I'm trying to remove solder from. Another probably $10. So we are getting quite a bit of stuff in here, not just a solder iron. We're getting a ton of little accessories. And when I was looking at this unit to replace my Hako, I didn't even realize that it came with all of this. I just looked at the value of a soldering station. I was kind of surprised when I opened it and I found out that it came with all these little things. Now, as far as tips, I did say that it is compatible with Hako tips. Uh, it does come preloaded with a nice tip that is probably gonna be sufficient for most basic soldering, but they also gave us five additional tips. If I were to buy the Hako one, I get one single tip and that's it. And tips we know can be very expensive, some range anywhere between $10 to $30 on up. So having five additional tips included, great bang for the buck. Now there are some different sizes on here for very different projects. We have the chisel, we have the conical tip. So it is nice that we have not only different sizes, different styles. And where am I gonna store those? on here so i gotta say this is an extremely hard to beat value in terms of what they're giving us for the money even if it doesn't last as long as the hako i think now i don't really think this is gonna last as long and i would definitely not recommend this for a production environment because this feels like an entry level unit feels like, feels like a consumer device more than a device that is meant to be used in a factory but before i fire this iron iron up let's talk about specifications this iron iron is rated at 80 watts now that doesn't mean that if you buy one that is rated at 120 the 120 is going to produce more heat than the 80 watts no what the wattage means is how much reserve of power we have built in on here so when we are soldering very small things we only need a little bit of wattage because there are small things that are pulling very little energy in, in terms when i say energy i mean heat but if we are soldering very large things if you're soldering a large piece of metal and you're using a soldering iron with very limited capability you're gonna pull all the heat out of here very quickly and the solder is not gonna melt and that's where higher wattage comes in if you are soldering larger things so now that we know that it produces 80 watts what is the actual temperature range well the temperature range is 80 c to 480 c or 176 fahrenheit to 896 fahrenheit more than enough for lead free solder or leaded solder however this is advertised as a lead free soldering station and i assume it does that because it comes with a lead free solder roll it is also advertised as being esd safe and when you are dealing with very small electronics that are sensitive to static esd compatible soldering equipment is a good thing to have but even though the entry price level for this soldering station is very low do we really need a full-size soldering station to do just basic soldering around the car um, yes and no and i say that because for many many years i used this trusty trusty soldering iron that i bought probably for five or ten bucks and i just plug this in 
gets hot and I start soldering. However, you can see that there's big differences. It only can go up to 30 watts, so that means I, I'm very limited to soldering very small things. There is no temperature control whatsoever. The temperature can fluctuate at any given point in time. The soldering tip in here, I am stuck with this one. I could buy more, but they're not gonna be of the level or the grade that a dedicated soldering station uh, soldering tips are or in the many shapes and sizes that are available. Now there is one step up from this, and that is this guy right here, a soldering iron, self-contained again, but with the ability to control the temperature. But again, here the temperature may fluctuate. This is just giving us a rough temperature, and it's also giving us additional power. This one's rated at 60 watts, this is rated at 80 watts. So this gives me a little bit ability to solder things that are a little bit bigger. Like this might be sufficient for most people. However, if you're serious about learning how to solder and are thinking about soldering perhaps gaming consoles or cell phones, a soldering station I think is the way to go. Whether you go for something like this or whether you go for something more expensive and that is going to be a little bit more heavy duty, I think a soldering station is a huge jump from these very basic soldering irons that can be acquired for five or 10 bucks at the local auto parts store. And finally, we get this little warning card with some interesting warnings, such as it is forbidden for minors, basically children, to use this product. And I can tell you, I learned that lesson the hard way. When I was very little, my dad was soldering in his garage and he happened to leave his soldering iron laying around plugged in. This bad boy was very, very hot I came in here not knowing what it was, ooh, that looks like fun, grabbed it completely like this, it stuck to my skin immediately. Managed to peel this off, mind you, I'm a little kid, I could not feel my hand at that point, went and sat for dinner. Very, very quickly, the parents realized that I was not talking, finally, I showed them my hand, busted crying, by the time I showed them my hand, it was full of blisters across the entire face of the palm. So very, very early lesson on soldering iron safety for me. One that I never forgot. And finally, we get this paper thin instruction manual that shows not only how to use the station and the accessories, but it also shows us the potential things that we might see being shown on this display. And by the way, this soldering station is available in other colors. I got blue because that reminds me of my trusty Hako, but it is also available in safety orange, and I believe it's also available in black. All right, let's hit this bad boy in action. I'm gonna fire this up and we're gonna see how long it takes to warm up <laughs> now you'll notice that the temperature was set around 500 somewhere in the middle and the temperature is going up it's going up I gotta be careful I don't touch this and yeah I could feel the heat coming off this and it has reached the temperature you know that because there is that blinking light right there so startup is fairly quick I'm gonna say it starts up probably as fast as my Hako one did. Now, as far as adjusting the temperature, we can turn the dial on here. And again, we're gonna see the same process. We have a temperature and then the temperature is gonna begin to rise. And once it reaches the target temperature, we'll have that blinking dot again. So temperature adjustment can also seems to be about the same speed as the Hako. We also have a little indicator for hair and height or C, and we can change that if we like Celsius, we can see the display in Celsius or we can see it in Fahrenheit. What's interesting is that they offer a lock function. So let's say that I wanted 675. For some reason, that's my favorite number. And if I click and hold that, we can lock that temperature in place. Now, once the temperature is in place, if I accidentally bump on this, it's not gonna change the temperature because it's locked. Now, while this is a good feature, I don't think I'm gonna use it that way. Normally in a production environment, in a factory, sometimes we lock soldering iron so operators can really change it versus what the engineer has defined as the proof. But with something so simple as a push on, push off lock, it doesn't seem to be a safety feature to prevent an operator from doing so. But let's also talk about the other function that this has built in, which is the auto standby and the auto sleep function. So this is on right now, but if I were to just leave it in here, 
and on use for about 10 minutes it's gonna go into standby mode which means it's gonna reduce the temperature to avoid burning out not only the element but the tip which I said can be expensive if I leave this in here for longer than 10 minutes let's say it reaches 20 minutes then it goes into auto sleep so again further reduces power to make sure that we are not leaving this burned out now this is helpful in an environment where sometimes we forget to turn off a siren iron and we walk away for a long time but we wanted it to be ready so putting it back in here and having the auto sleep function out of standby is helpful the hako does not have either one of those functions does not have auto standby does not have auto sleep now as far as locking the temperature in the hako the fx88d digital one yes you can set a specific temperature so you can set several presets something that we don't have in here however i have never really used presets on my hako so i don't really see a need to have ability to set presets on here but also let's talk about temperature stability how well can the tow auto hold a specific temperature well this is rated at plus or minus 2c or plus or minus 4f so about four degrees fahrenheit now this is somewhere where the hako would also have the upper hand because this one has the ability to hold plus or minus 1c which is less than two degrees versus the four degrees on here however again i will say that i don't really need that stability because if i'm soldering at 531 if all of a sudden i'm soldering at 529 two degree difference not gonna matter for my use even if i had four degree difference if i had let's say 535 versus 4 531 it would not really affect my soldering now stability is something that is desired in a production something that is going to be used in an environment where an engineer or manufacturing guidelines dictate that it has to hold a specific temperature but i will tell you temperature stability is not something that's going to give us perfect solder what is going to give us good solder is having an operator that is trained on how to correctly use the tool but also let's talk about temperature accuracy how do i know that when i put this at five 31 I am really getting 531 Fahrenheit well the tow auto is rated at plus or minus 15 degrees Celsius or plus or minus 27 Fahrenheit but again if I think about 27 degrees will bring me from 530 roughly to about 550 is probably not gonna affect my soldering very much because I am not doing work of the nature that requires that kind of control now the Hako one is interesting because they do not rate the accuracy of the unit and the fx 88 d can be calibrated which means that you as a user are able to set how accurate this is there's a separate kit that can be bought and allows you to test the temperature and then make minor adjustments to make sure that that temperature is within a certain range and i think that's one of the reasons why hako doesn't really show how accurate the temperature is in here because that is determined by the company that is doing the calibration on it in a production environment, you are probably gonna need calibrated equipment, especially if a customer has those kind of requirements. For home use, do I, am I gonna calibrate this? Probably not. Just a calibration kit is gonna cost me probably the price of two or three of these things. So I just wanna know that I that this iron has the ability to reach a certain temperature. In fact, when I solder, I set a, a temperature on here, but then I adjust my temperature based on what the workpiece is doing i don't just set it to a number and yeah say i am good to go that's typically not how soldering works and the last feature where hako has the upper hand is the locking function as we saw the locking function is here with a button that you hold for three seconds not really a degree of control anybody can push that button on the hako one you are able to set and lock an operator completely out of here unless they know the password I, this is good in a factory environment do i really need to lock my soldering iron with a password for use at home as a mechanic probably not so all the features that i don't really get on this unit that i had in my hako unit are not deal breakers for me because of what i plan to use this soldering iron for 
So hopefully this will give you guys an idea if this is the Siren station for you or if you want to invest on a Hako one. And I do have a full video series coming up where I'm going to be using the soldering station and show you the process of soldering from the very beginning, assuming we know nothing about it, soldering and then working us up to an intermediate level and then finally advancing us to an advanced level where we have the ability to solder very small components, which are called surface mount components, onto PC boards and we're gonna do it all with this unit. So we'll also get to see how long it lasts and also we'll get to see the different use of what tip for what application makes sense. So if you guys wanna see those soldering videos, make sure you guys are subscribed by hitting the subscribe button down below if you guys have any other questions regarding the to auto is soldering station please put that in the comments down below if you found any part of this video helpful please hit the thumbs up button to support the channel and as always thank you for watching and i'll see you on the next one